Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Magali, I'm an Oracle Apex developer and in today's video I will be discussing Ajax callbacks in Oracle Apex. We will explore the concept of Ajax callbacks and how they can be used in our applications. I will provide a code walkthrough to demonstrate how to implement these callbacks and also how to display custom user-friendly messages. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is our use case. We have an appointment form with three fields, name, phone number, and date. Name and date fields being mandatory while phone number is optional. And what we want to achieve is that once the user enters uh, the information and clicks submit request, I want to send all this information to the server without having to reload the page. That way the user can continue interacting with my page without us stopping them from doing so because we have to reload the page because we need to submit it. So first, uh, let's go ahead and try this by leaving name and date fields empty and click submit request. And as you can see, two errors occur. Name must contain a value and appointment date must contain a value. These errors are actually custom based on the data I receive from my Ajax callback. So now if I enter Magali, and then on the day I put a date in the past and click submit request, then I will get another error, which reads appointment date must be today or in the future. If I actually go ahead and submit a proper date and click submit request, then I get a success message appointment created. So this is all being handled with the Ajax callback and all the information or errors or success messages are coming from my process. So before uh, moving into the code, First, we need to understand what AJAX is. So AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It is a technique that allows web pages to communicate with a server and update parts of the page without having to reload all of it. So that means like if the user is interacting with a part of my page and they have clicked submit request, I will still want them to be able to see my page without me stopping them from doing so because I need to submit the page. So this is done by sending the data, um, so by sending and receiving data in the background. And this typically is done using JavaScript. This makes web applications faster and more user-friendly. As I mentioned before, we stop the submission of the page. So we do not reload the page for the user to be able to submit this information. So it's very handy if you have multiple uh, regions in your page and you do not want to stop your user from interacting with it. So now that we have talked about what Ajax is, we're gonna start diving into the code. So I'm gonna edit my page. And here you can see my appointment form. I'm just gonna zoom out. And I have my appointment date, uh, phone number, name, and then I have my button submit. And the first step will go to the process and click right click on Ajax callback. I'm going to create process. This is going to be called create appointment because that's what I'm actually doing when I'm submitting the request. I'm going to leave all this empty. And then for the source, it's going to blow the code. What are we going to do? Zoom in. Yep. So first we're going to start by declaring two variables, JSON object and errors array. So this first one, this is a JSON object. So you can think of it as a container where you can store data in a format that it will be easier to send to the back to the client. Now the errors array, this one is a variable that will store the JSON array. So a list of values. So this will be used to store the list of errors in our array. So after we have those variables declared, then I have 
a first check. If the field name is null, then I want to append, I want to add to my errors array, the error name must contain a value. Now, if the other case, if the appointment date is null, then I want to append, so add to my array, to my list of errors, the error that reads appointment date must contain a value. Now, in the case that my appointment date is not null, but the date is in the past, I want to display a different message. So for that, I have a check. If the date submitted is less than today's day, then I will add to my errors array, to my list, appointment date must be today or in the future. After I have done all these checks, then I have an if statement that checks for the length for the size of that array. So if the errors array, so in the list of errors, the size is greater than zero, then I want to add to my JSON object, to my container, the errors array. So I do that by using my variable JSON object dot put and then errors and then my values for them, which is the array, the list. Then I go ahead and use sys.htp.p. And what this does is this sends the JSON object, uh, which will contain an array of errors or success messages, uh, depending on the input validation that we have. And this sends it back to the client. So anything that is returned in this JSON object will be sent back to me. Now, if we do not have any errors, we're just going to go ahead and insert the information into my table. And then I'm going to display uh, a success message. So I'm putting into my JSON object to my container a success message appointment created. And then again, I'm using sys.htp.p to send this line of code, this information back to the client. So if we click validation here and then click OK, then now we can go into our dynamic actions, into our events, and on click, create a dynamic action and do submit appointment. And on the event will be click, selection type will be my button submit. And the action for intro will be execute JavaScript code. So just gonna fetch that code. So the first step, oops, that's too big. <laughs> the first step will be using apex.server.process. Now this is a function provided by Oracle Apex and this makes the Ajax call. So by using that apex.server.process, then I specify the name of my process uh, of my Ajax callback. In this case, is the one we just created, create underscore appointment. And one of the values we need to pass here is the page items I'm submitting because that's the, the data we have from the user. So we use the items, name, phone number, and appointment date, since those are the fields in my page. Then we have data type. And by default, that is set to JSON. However, if you look at the documentation, which I will share um, later, you can change it to be what you need for your application. Now we have a done. Um, so this is prom this is a promise. So depending on the data I get back from my HS callback, if you remember at the beginning I mentioned that uh, we send and receive information with an HS callback. So in this case is the information I'm getting back from that call, then I do a check if there's data return and if that data has errors and is greater than zero, 
the length of those errors then the first step will be to clear errors in the page so i use apex.message.clearerrors and this will remove any current errors that are being displayed in the page then i'm gonna go through each of the errors i have in that data i received so data again this is the uh, data we got back from the callback errors which is if you remember this is what we set up in our appointment process right here errors so if i have any errors then for each of them because we have multiple errors that we can display at once then i'm going to use apex.message.show errors and i'm going to specify the type to be error the location page but you can change this to be in line with your item if you like and then the message will sh will be the error message that we have set up on our create appointment function process now if i do not have any errors then i do want to show a page success so for that i use apec.message.showPageSuccess. and again in this case i'm accessing the data and i'm obtaining the success message i added in my agents callback process which was right over here when i push into my json object container we gonna run the code uh, for this to make more sense like where are we getting these errors where are we getting this success message and for that i'm gonna console log two things the data which again this is what the agents callback is giving us back because we are the clients so this is the data we're receiving back and then the other one is just uh, the data formatted in json uh, for us to be able to see what we did with the JSON object, appending to the array, etc. So let's go ahead and click OK, save and run. And here in the name, I'm going to remove this and not add anything. I'm going to click Submit Request. As you can see, I get the two errors have occurred name must contain a value and appointment date must contain a value if i go to inspect i'll see the two um the two uh, console logs i did so the first one is exactly what was returned from my ajax callback and if you remember for that we used um sys dot http dot p json object so that's what if you remember i mentioned that this is the line that is being sent back to the client which is us so get back to it then this is the data we get back which is the object the json object i specified before and as you can see we have the errors array that we created and has two values in it name must contain a value and appointment date must contain a value and then we have the other console log we did which was receive data and this is just formatted um, in json and we see the errors and then we see our array of values so when we were doing in our create appointment in our ajax callback um the append and then the put this is what we were doing we were placing the arrows and then the array for each of them now in the scenario that actually submit a name and then i'm gonna select a date in the past and click submit request as you can see the previous error messages get cleared and now I have the error message appointment date must be today or in the future. And if we see what was a return, we have errors in the array. And we have appointment day must be today or in the future. So exactly what I have specified. And then we have the formatted version of that. Now, 
in the case I actually submit a proper day and click submit request, then our object, the data we get back from the Ajax callback will have the success message appointment created. And this is the formatted version. So as you can see, like it's a communication between us and then the server sending us back the information of what happened based on the input validations you have. And then you can customize that as desired for your client. Now, the other bit in our code was the fail part. So this fail is it's gonna trigger when there was an external factor. So that means that the Ajax callback was not able to, it was not successful. So it was not able to be completed. So in this case, in the DOM, that means that it was actually completed and we got something back. And this fail is in the cases that the Ajax callback was not able to finish, it was not able to um, execute. So for that, we're going to do again the clear errors. And then I'm using again apex.message.showErrors, then selecting the type error, location in the page, and then the message, something went wrong, try again later. So to see this in practice, I'm going to go to the network. And as you can see, I'm here as offline. And I do have these, which are correct um, values, my name, and then I have the date set in the future. And if I click submit request, I get an error saying something went wrong, try again later. And as you can see here, we get the error. This is what was what we got back. And is that the error, the error is internet disconnected. So instead of displaying this not nice message to the user, then we have catered for that by displaying a custom message, something went wrong, try again later. So as you can see with Ajax callbacks, you can do a lot of things. You can let your user continue interacting with your page while you are making any processes in the background and you can customize any information as you need and display a more seamless and better user experience. So that was our tutorial for today on Ajax callbacks. We took a look at what Ajax is and how we can do a basic implementation in Apex and how to provide a nice user experience by not having to submit the page and reload it, but instead allowing the user to interact with the page while we are sending this information um, to our database. Uh, there are different ways you can go about doing your validations in your code. This is an example on how you can customize these errors or success messages depending on your input validations. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments um, in this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.